Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. An aircraft carrier flight deck is unlike any other work environment in the world. There are many moving parts, and each crew member must follow strict procedures to ensure the safety of all members and aircraft. The pilot's duties are crucial to the overall operation of any flight. All pre-flight operations start with a detailed briefing, which usually includes a briefing from the Carrier Intelligence Center and covers any flight-related information, such as current and forecasted weather, the ship's current and forecasted position, critical operations in the given area, recent data from the intelligence analysis, combat search and rescue report, divert airfield data, as well as current operating conditions in the location. Following the briefing, the flight crew proceeds to maintenance control to review the aircraft discrepancy book. A special attention is given to the A-sheet and checking of the correct basic weight, fuel, and store loads to ensure the catapult is set correctly. The weight sheet is then delivered to flight deck control prior to aircraft pre-flight. At the aircraft, the pilot will conduct a normal pre-flight in accordance with the carrier's standard operating procedures. They begin the pre-flight by checking the area around the aircraft for foreign object debris, leaking or pooling fluid, and the general condition of the aircraft. After embarking, they conduct normal cockpit inspections and checks. When taxiing, the pilot must precisely follow the signals from the flight director to ensure proper spotting on the catapult. When the aircraft is ready, steam from the ship's reactor is ported to fill the catapult cylinder. The force produced by the steam is sufficient enough to sling the aircraft forward with enough velocity to generate lift for takeoff. This system propels the aircraft from zero to 165 miles per hour in two seconds. On occasion, aircraft carrier members have the privilege of performing an air show for distinguished visitors. Here, they perform several maneuvers, which includes takeoffs, flybys, and landings. The Navy also performs a fast roping exercise out of a Sikorsky Seahawk. This technique allows troops to deploy from a helicopter in places where the aircraft cannot touch down. Being a naval aviator is one thing, and becoming one is another. In general, all naval aviators are officers. In order to become a naval officer, an aspiring aviator must obtain a bachelor's degree from an accredited college. The aspiring aviator must become a commissioned officer by enrolling in the ROTC during college. Where they obtain foundational skills for a role as a naval officer. Another option is to pursue officer candidate school. This is a 12-week training program where aspiring naval aviators will learn the basic regulations and rules for being an officer in the Navy. They will also take part in an intensive physical conditioning program. Yet another option is to attend the U.S. Naval Academy. The Naval Academy only accepts around 9% of total applicants. That's approximately 1,300 aspiring naval officers each year. The aspiring naval aviator is required to pass the Aviation Selection Test Battery, which consists of five different sections and includes mathematics, spatial perception, and mechanical comprehension. Aspiring naval aviators are evaluated in an introductory flight screening. Afterwards, they spend six weeks in a classroom studying navigation, engines, aviation psychology, and aerodynamics. 
Now the candidate can begin their primary flight training. During this flight training, candidates receive hands-on instruction with a T-34C, the Navy's main training aircraft. The T-34C Turbo Mentor has been in use since the 1970s and has trained a countless number of naval aviators, prior to them flying the F-A-18 Super Hornet. The T-34s, believe it or not, it makes you a better aviator because you actually have to look outside. Um, you have to think about actually trimming the aircraft. The nice thing about the T-34, T-34 doesn't have any autopilot, cruise control, anything like that, so it forces you to pay attention to the aircraft, actually fly the aircraft a little bit more than the F-18. The student will have spent over 100 hours in the T-34C or in a simulator. In primary flight training, they learn basic flight skills, particularly aerobatics, night flying, and how to fly in formation. Primary flight training is where the aviator hones their skills. Once completed, the aviator can choose what aircraft to specialize in. The type of aircraft the naval aviator selects will determine the flight time required to complete their training. Over 100 hours will be required in all classes. One of the most challenging tasks in aviation is a landing on an aircraft carrier. Field carrier landing practices are training exercises that safely simulate landing on an aircraft carrier. This required flight training precedes carrier landing operations, and a naval aviator must practice countlessly on land and in simulators to perform this difficult task. In addition to each individual crew member's role on an aircraft carrier, there are many routines and drills that they perform as a group. One important task is a foreign object debris walk, or FOD walk. In this walk, each member walks the flight deck picking up any and all debris that may be ingested by an aircraft as it takes off or lands. This is a crucial function that serves two purposes. First, it is an exercise to collect FOD materials that have accumulated. And second, it raises awareness of the types of FOD that can accumulate. Midshipmen also participate in the ship's general quarters drills. This includes routine training exercises to maintain naval carrier readiness. Mission readiness is not just important for sailors, but it's important for the personnel on base to be ready to pitch in when emergencies arise. Keep going, don't stop! Keep going! Seamen, firefighters, and sailors run drills on board air carriers, which helps each person understand their roles in the mission. What would any ship be without some of the unsung heroes that lie within the mess decks of an air carrier? This group of people provide a vital role in providing nutrition to the entire operation. The mess deck aboard an air carrier is a designated area where military personnel socialize, eat, and in some cases, live. The main feature of this system is that all meals aboard the ship are centrally prepared and served in a general dining room managed by a professional cook's branch. Cooks are professionally trained, bringing specialist skills to the preparation of food and removing domestic chores from the hands of sailors in other branches.
There are occasions when sailors and marines need to blow off some steam. Enjoying a nature swim in the ocean is a great opportunity. Swim call is the military tradition of swimming in the ocean. Downtime at sea is scarce. However, sailors and marines make the most of that time with swim calls. Individuals are allowed to swim near the U.S. vessel while onlookers keep an eye out for sharks. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.